Hello student, welcome to the physics session. Today we are going to start with a topic called lever of the first order. This falls under the unit of types of simple machine under the theme of energy. Till now you already know what are simple machines and we had learnt about levers. Now we are going to discuss different classes of lever one by one. In this class we will be concentrating on lever of first order. So let's begin with the chapter students. In lever of first order, we already know that the fulcrum is situated in the center of the load and the effort. Right student? In this case, we can shift the load and the effort on any of the sides. So, in first order of the lever, the fulcrum is situated between the load and the effort. Now, this is what we already know. But, the fulcrum can be positioned anywhere between the load and the effort, right? So, depending on this, we can have various output out of our first order levers also. So, in first case, let's say I define my fulcrum by the letter F. Then my effort is given by E and my load is defined as L. So, in a case when the effort arm, now students effort arm is nothing but the distance between the effort and the fulcrum. Similarly, the load arm is defined as what? The distance between the load and the fulcrum. So, in this case we are defining the effort arm may be equal to, so we are saying EF can be equal to FL, it can be less than FL or it can even be more than FL depending on the position where we place our fulcrum in between the effort and the load. Right students? Then let's discuss two cases. In the case when the effort arm is more than the load arm, that means we are considering EF is greater than LF. Right? So in the case when the effort arm is more than the load arm, a very small effort is required to move a load. So, when we are using the lever of first order in such a situation, then we require a very small force. On the other hand, the case was also there when the load arm was greater than the effort arm, right? So, considering that if the effort arm, that means EF is less than the load arm, that is LF, we get a we have to apply a very large force to move the load. Now students, we know that simple machines are used to reduce the effort. They are used to make the task at hand convenient. So, in this case, though the effort is, the, the effort applied is large in quantity. So, this is not a very desirable situation where we can use our first order lever. Right? Now, depending on our position of the fulcrum. We understood that effort arm can be equal to my load arm, can be less than my load arm or can be greater than my load arm, right? Also, we know that mechanical advantage is given by a formula that is L upon E or effort arm upon load arm. Right? So, in all these three cases, we will get three different values for our mechanical advantage. In one case, when we have EF is equals to LF, the mechanical advantage will become equivalent to 1. On the other hand, when EF is less than LF, our mechanical advantage will come out to be less than 1. And in the last case, when EF is greater than LF, our mechanical advantage will become more than 1. So, depending on the position of my fulcrum in first order lever, mechanical advantage can be more than 1, equal to 1 or even possibly less than 1. Ok students, now there are various examples that of first order lever that we see in our daily life. For example, a seesaw. You must have played on a seesaw students, right? A seesaw has a central point on which the seesaw bends on 
each side when the load and the effort or in your case two students sit on that in that case one student can be considered as the effort and the other student is considered as the load in this case we are applying the signs of first order lever the other example would be a scissor in your scissor where the scissor the two points of the scissors are two blades of the scissor are pointed is pivoted are called the fulcrum right then anything that you need to cut comes out to be as our load and the fingers you are holding the scissor with is the effort applied the say the last example would be water pump in your water pump hand pump if you ever use it you apply the force on the handle so that is your effort it is pivoted at a point that acts as the fulcrum and the load takes up the water and pulls it fills the point and it comes out from the opening right so these are some of the examples of first order lever that we see in everyday life there are some tools also that work as first order lever such as a crowbar a claw hammer and a plier all these instruments are used by carpenters right they are used to pull out nails or dig in anything that has been stuck this kind of levers also work on the principle of first order lever so these are the various examples of first order lever that you see around you okay students we are going to learn a new topic that is lever of the second order this falls under the unit of types of simple machine under the theme of energy till now you understood about various types of simple machines lever and different classes of lever now we are discussing each class of lever in different topics fine students till now we covered lever of first order now we are going to look the about lever of second order now students when we talk about lever of second order the position of effort load and fulcrum changes as compared to the first order in the first order the fulcrum is placed between the effort and the load but in the second case that means in the case of second order lever the load is situated in between the effort and the fulcrum as you can see in the image the fulcrum is at one edge there is load in between and then we are acting effort here that means the load is falling between the fulcrum and the effort right students now in this case the load arm is always smaller when we talk about second order lever you can see the load is situated as in between the effort and the fulcrum it is must that the load arm in this case we can write it let's say if it is this is point a f this is point a and this is point b then my f a is always less than my f b right so in case of second order lever the load arm is always smaller than the effort arm thus the effort is always less required to move a heavy load that means it is a must condition that the effort required to pull the load is always less fine let's understand how this happens in second order lever as the effort arm is longer right now you can see this where is my effort arm where my force is being applied so this is my effort arm and on the other hand this is my load arm now in second order lever as the effort arm is longer than the load arm the mechanical advantage now how mechanical advantage is given mechanical advantage can be written as effort arm upon load arm right students this is the formula we already learnt in the previous classes so when we know the formula for effort, mechanical advantage is effort arm upon load arm and effort arm is always greater than load arm then my mechanical advantage will be always greater than 1 in case of second class lever okay students now there are various examples of second class lever that we use in our daily life but we do not understand how they work like when a boy is rowing a boat what happens 
they are pivoted or they use the edge of the boat as the fulcrum as the load the fulcrum in this case is the point at through which the movement is free so my fulcrum is the end part of the rowing boat and my effort is applied by the boy hand right so in this case we are using or he is using a lever of second order then we talk about a wheelbarrow this is used to take some heavy stuff from one part to another let's say sand so what happens the movement is around the wheel so that acts as our, as our fulcrum the load is inside the barrel this is acting at this point and then my effort is put here using the hands so even this is an example of a second order lever right and the last one is a nut cracker now this is used to crack the nuts or bring crack the shell of the nuts and bring the part of the the part that we eat out from the shell so in this case the fulcrum is where the movement is free so it is the edge of that nut cracker then the nut or the complete nut who, whose shell has to be broken is my load and the effort is placed at the two handles of the nut cracker so even this is an example of a second order lever right students so these are various example of second order lever that we use in our daily life we are going to start with the topic called lever of the third order this topic falls under the unit of types of simple machine that falls under the theme of energy till now we already discussed different types of simple machines and lever we are studying different types of or different classes of lever till now we understood first order of lever and second order of lever now we are going to discuss the third order of lever so let's start with the session students for first order the fulcrum is in between the effort and the load right for second order the load is in between the fulcrum and the effort but in third order we place the effort in between the fulcrum and the load as you can see in the image the effort the fulcrum is at this end the effort is in between and the load is on the other end that means in third order lever the effort is situated in between the load and the fulcrum okay students now how does the third order lever work the effort arm is always less or smaller than the load arm now that is an obvious thing the effort is in between the fulcrum and the load it is tend that the fulcrum and the effort arm is always less than the fulcrum and the load arm right so in this case more effort is required to lift a lighter load that means you have to put in or draw more effort to pull any of the load then why would we use a third order lever we know that th levers or simple machines are used to make the task easier but in this case you can see that more effort is being required to put even a lighter load still a third order lever are is used now why they are used Be because in these levers the load moves through a larger distance as compared to the effort that means when you have to apply the effort to move the load to a larger distance you use what class of lever students third class of levers that means whenever the load has to be moved for the larger distance we use a third class of lever so these levers are also called as speed multiplier lever so whenever you need to increase the speed or you need to shift or pull the load with a greater distance you will use a third class lever now the examples of third class lever are shown here one such example is a sugar tong now in a sugar tong your fulcrum is situated at one end and your effort is applied at in between the load that means whenever you need to pick a sugar cube you need to apply the effort on the tongs and the fulcrum will be the edge of the sugar tong the another example of a third class order lever is a 
fire tong. It also works as similar on similar principle as a sugar tong. The fulcrum is on one edge. The effort is applied on the two tongs you are using, and the load is in between the two tongs. Right? The another common example that we use daily, but we do not know that it is a third class lever, is a bread knife. In a bread knife, the handle of the knife is acting as the fulcrum. The effort by your hand is on the fulcrum, right? You are putting it on the, not on the edge, but on the fulcrum, or just beyond the fulcrum, and then your load is transferred to the blade. This is the example of a third order lever. Okay, students. Thank you.